So we are in the middle of a wrestling war. And I know some people don't want to hear that, but it makes it so much better for us fans. Because now we have two heavyweight promotions swinging right hooks and doing jabs. And ultimately, all the rewards go into our pockets. Or our fun glad. But just think of all the stuff that we have with Cody Rhodes, for example, at WrestleMania last year. Or when Brian Danielson and Adam Cole both just walked out at the end of an AEW pay-per-view. I mean, that was well over a year ago, but I'm still not over it. It was like the internet was booking wrestling. So I'm just having a great time. And if we dive back into that rumor mill, well, if you can believe it, we may be about to have another Cody Rhodes situation. Why? Woodpecker, here's why. So before we do get going, no, this shouldn't come as any sort of a surprise, because I think it's worth hazarding a guess The WWE wants all of AEW's top guys, and AEW would like all of WWE's top guys. I mean, why wouldn't you? If you have a roster, and you want to bolster said roster, you want to get the best of the best in the industry. I mean, do you not think Tony Khan would be super happy if he was able to get a Kevin Owens? Of course he would. And do you not think Triple H would be in the dance of joy if he was being able to get his hands on MJF? This happens in the sports world. And even though wrestling does fit into its own little bubble, it's still essentially sports. These are chats for a different time though, because as far as we know, their contracts aren't up for a while. But apparently, three superstars are about to have deals expiring. Their names are Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, and none other than Kenny Omega. I mean, at the very least, it does sound like they're in negotiation territory. So if I pretend I'm Paul Levesque, oh, I'm Triple H, oh, I'm the game, do you not think I'm going to make a play for these three guys once again? Of course I'm going to do that because I'm running a wrestling company and I know if I was able to tempt them over, da -da -da, there is going to be a lot of buzz. I mean, not only are you getting some of the best wrestlers on the planet, but much like Cody Rhodes, you would be getting a trio of people that were basically responsible for creating none other than All Elite Wrestling. I mean, without them, I'm not even sure that promotion ever comes into existence, which is why back in 2018, what did WWE do? They said, oh, Omega and the Young Bucks, would you like to come over here? We'll give you lots of money. These meetings do tie in as well, because both back then and today, when Kenny Omega is asked about them, he's always very complimentary about WWE and how they went about their business. So it's not like there was any animosity or the reason here was they felt slighted, not at all. They just looked what AEW could potentially do, and they thought to themselves, well, we should probably be a part of that, because we could change history. I even remember Kenny talking about the fact there's actually a huge upside to going to WWE, because while you do have less creative input, essentially, somebody comes up to you and says, oh, hello, Mr. Omega, this is what we'd like to do for this evening, and you just try and do it to the best of your ability. So I suppose some of the pressure of your shoulders moves over there. This is why he is one of the best, because he always looks at everything from both sides. He's such a fair human being, or at least that's how he comes across to me. And the Young Bucks were so desired. Once again, we go back to speculation territory. Apparently in their contract, it said, look, we'll put you in NXT for six months and you will have final say on your creative. So if you don't like what we're doing with you, we'll open the door and you can just go. So WWE clearly sees them as unique and special talents. Once again, this was years ago. So right now, you got to times that by 8.2. I've done the maths. This is where AEW does come into the mix though, because no, Tony Khan is not an idiot. Of course he wants to keep them as well, especially because they're a cornerstone of his company. But even though they recently lost the trio's titles, there's still loads of things they can do. I mean, they can continue on as the elite. You can put the Youngs back, back in the tag team division and they'll smash it with a bunch of teams they haven't fought yet. And as for Kenny Omega, we talk about it on every single AEW video, he still has a ton of dream fights he can do in AEW. So if he wants to stay there, good for him. I mean, Don Callis was even teasing this the other day that he thought Kenneth was about to go back into the singles division. And like I say, of course I want to see that. Have you seen his matches? He doesn't have a bad one. If nothing else, we have to talk about perception because that does come into play because there was quite a large portion of people that saw Cody Rhodes go from AEW to WWE. So they decided, well, World Wrestling Entertainment must still be the big leagues because look what's happening in front of my eyes. And a huge reason for this is because of their size and wealth. But don't forget too, even if they did lose millions and millions of dollars, we don't have to worry about that and we could still tune into Raw and SmackDown every single week. 
And then when I go home and see my mum, what is she going to call wrestling? WWE. That's right. She doesn't say, how's the wrestling going? She says, how's all the WWE stuff going? Because much like Google, Vince McMahon just got in there. It really did change the mood though, because up until this point, it had been wrestlers going the other way. So Cody did it. And all of a sudden, a bunch of eyebrows went up and they were like, huh, well, what does that mean? Especially when you throw in his name value and history and the fact he did pop up back at Mania. I mean, there's no two ways about it. This was absolutely all time. And do you not think Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, even if it's just in the darkest parts of their brain, wouldn't want to experience that a little bit? Of course they would. It doesn't matter who you are. All of us grew up on the WWF or the WWE in some sense. So when you are a professional wrestler and you're out there doing your craft, there has to be a part of you that's like, well, yeah, I wouldn't mind a WrestleMania moment. I wouldn't mind winning the Royal Rumble. That sounds pretty good. I mean, I would imagine that most talent would just like to tick that box when it comes to their resume. But when we switch it up again, let's not go crazy here. Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks are also pivotal to AEW. I mean, there would be a massive hole that a bunch of other people would have to step in to fill. Because I truly do believe the Young Bucks are one of the best tag teams ever. And without them, what we know wrestling to be in 2023 wouldn't exist. And it's the same with Kenny Omega. I mean, did you see that match he had with Will Ospreay a couple of months ago? I don't think anybody could have done that apart from those two. That's basically magic. So he's definitely a generational talent. And given that we have just brought up his New Japan status, I actually think that has to be a factor as well. Because if he did go to WWE, I don't think he's going to be allowed to go back east. Also, you'd assume anyway, because there is that rumor out there that when Brian Danielson was renegotiating, WWE said to him, oh, of course, we'll let you go to New Japan. We'll figure something out. However, when we move back forward to today, the relationship between NJPW and AEW is so strong. I mean, they're doing joint pay-per-views. I think if you do decide to go to the other side... You don't get to do it no more. I mean, it would just send a signal to the rest of the roster. Oh, hey, you could have your cake and eat it too. Sometimes you just have to make the cake and give it to somebody else. And this feels like a bit of a deal breaker to me because given over the last few years, Omega talked about how much he missed wrestling in Japan and how it was his home away from home. The fact that his foot is now back in the door. Is he going to remove that again and just put on a pair of socks? I don't think so. so. This really was a spiritual homecoming for the man. And also, apparently, we have two more matches planned between Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay. And the first one isn't even as crazy as they're planning to go. So as a selfish fan, I kind of feel like I need that in my life. So it's not just about accepting a bag of cash or forgetting about all this other stuff. And actually, when it comes to these three, I don't think they think like that anyway. Because they totally understand the bigger picture and the impact and they always have. Ultimately, and we have to remember this because I know how crazy wrestling fans can go, they need to decide what is best for them and their families, and then that's what they should flubbing go and do. I mean, WWE does have a more crazy schedule, and let's face it, at any point over the next 12 months, Vince McMahon could go, ta-da, and magically be back in control. And deep down in my tum-tum, I kind of get the sensation that Triple H would do a better job his father-in-law. I mean, the man has never been the biggest fan of tag team wrestling, so that's a red flag. And I have no idea if he even knows who Kenny Omega is. Now, obviously, he had a pre-existing relationship with Cody Rhodes that definitely helped. So many people, like Jim Ross and Bruce Pitchard, always go, if you don't work for WWE, Vince needs to be introduced to you. That doesn't sound particularly good. So when I really do think about it, I think AEW should just offer them whatever they want so they do stay. They're so damn important to the promotion. And I know, I know, this whole video you've been going, Simon, you need to mention the CM Punk situation. Well, you've waited long enough, so we'll put it here. I mean, I really don't think there's much else to say, but no, I don't think Tony Khan is going to go, oh, well, the elite are leaving, so we're bringing back CM Punk. And I don't think it's going to go the other way either. If the voice of the voiceless is to return to AEW, these lot are going to have to sit down and have a bit of a chat. Now, it doesn't mean they have to work together on screen, but there has to be a bit of care bear behind the curtain. I mean, nobody knows what the future holds, but if there is the potential of them shaking hands, I would imagine everybody involved already knows that, and it's been spoken about. So what they want to do after that, it's totally up to them. It is going to be fascinating, though, because there's another avenue we could take with all this. What if they all make different decisions? What if Nick Jackson goes, well, I'm off to WWE. See you guys. And I don't think they would do that. I think they would exist as a group. But I also once said that I never thought Cody Rhodes was going back to WWE. 
So what do I know? I couldn't even keep my hair. This is why the so-called war is so damn important though, because it opens up so many opportunities for the wrestlers, which always duh, 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 links into more money. I mean, when you are putting your body on the line week in, week out, you deserve as many plaudits as possible, and having two creative endeavors go at it just helps with that. I can't lie either, I love this stuff. And I know you love this stuff. Deep down in my tum tum when I see these headlines, I'm like a schoolboy. I'm all tee -hee -hee -hee. Maybe it's gonna happen again. Cause I was very lucky to be at WrestleMania 38 when Cody Rhodes did make his big return. It's like being on the greatest roller coaster ever. And it just feels like a fever dream this has happened anyway, especially because he won the Royal Rumble. He's going to main event WrestleMania and he's probably going to become WWE Champion. And when you tie that into what was happening in 2016, when the powers that be were going, no, you must remain a star, Dust. Well, you just never know what's down the line. And of course, people in AEW would have taken note of this too. You don't debut in front of 70,000 people with everyone going, oh my gosh, I love it, without having just a tiny pang when you think to yourself, oh, you're pretty good if 70,000 people were cheering for me. One can but dream. And no matter what happens too, this won't be the first or last in either direction. More guys and girls are gonna start pondering to themselves, or well, maybe I should go to the other side, because sometimes when you do do that, you can resurrect your entire career. I honestly can't wait too, because you just know eventually, we will get a Lex Luger on the first ever edition of Nitro Situation, one of those that nobody even heard about, and trust me, I was like a fetus when that did go down, but even then I knew this was cool, and now that I'm an old man, I want it again. So watch this space, and the biggest piece of advice I could give you is just enjoy it as much as possible. Otherwise, what are we doing with our lives? Wrestling is there to bring us fun and enjoyment into our hearts. So open it up and feel the G's. Also, please do leave a comment below and let me know what do you think about all this and answer the big question. Do you think Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks will ever go to WWE or is this a bunch of baloney? Then please do like the video, share the video and subscribe. And you can find us on whatculture.com and you can follow us at Simon316 at whatculturewwe. And look, there's videos floating around the place. Give one a click. My name is Simon What Culture. Thank you very much for watching me as always. I appreciate your time and I appreciate you. Now go out there and have some fun. I've told you once, I'll tell you twice. Or you don't have to listen to me at all. I mean, look at you. Look at you, look at me. Wearing a shirt that says hungry. That doesn't even make any sense. Goodbye.